Hey everybody, today I want to show you something that I created to make things a little bit easier for beginners. I've noticed that there's been more problems with permissions, dataset creation, and getting Docker Compose files right than anything else. It seems like that's where a lot of users are getting tripped up. My goal is that you would read all the stuff that we've produced in YouTube and the wiki and the blog and everywhere else that we're doing stuff and learn how to do this yourself. But in order to get up off the ground, I've created a script that I put on GitHub that should help you guys out with that a little bit. So today what we're going to look at is we're going to look at um, my TrueNOS system. This is a brand new TrueNOS system. This is actually Fangtooth. I'm going to do my testing here today to show you because I've not done anything on this. There is no pools, there are no data sets, and there are no apps. So if you're starting from scratch, that's what the script is built for. If you already have apps, data sets, and things like that, and you run the script, and the script finds that those exist, they won't touch your existing setup. So that's very important to know. If you were to run the script and you've already got a whole bunch of things built, uh, you're not going to hurt your existing um, TrueNOS setup. So let's come into storage. I'm just going to create a pool real fast. I'm going to call it Tank, because of course that's the name I always use for testing. It's just going to be a Stripe, and we're going to save and go to review, and we're going to create our pool. Okay, let's come over to my configuration. We're going to choose the pool Tank. And now my app service is up and running. I'm not using a graphics card, so I don't have to go in here and pass anything through. So I'm going to come over here to my TrueNAS, and I'm going to go to my system, and I'm going to go to my shell. I need to do two things. I need to do a sudo su and type in my password. And then I need to type some commands here. So we're going to go over GitHub. This is the script that I created. Where is it? Uh, TrueNAS file structure.sh. I encourage you to look at the script and never just download scripts on the internet and run them without doing without doing some kind of checking. Just so, again, you guys don't have to be programmers. This is very simple. This function creates the data set, and here you can say the, it's going to ask you for your pool name. Um, it's going to put a mount set amount here for mount slash data set. It's going to create a whole bunch of data sets for you, which is the goal of the script. And then it's going to mount them and change permissions. It's going to change permissions to apps, apps, and 770. Again, that's to make everything work with the TrueNOS operating system, which runs all of its apps as user group apps. And 770 will give apps and user apps and groups apps full permission. Down here, this part of the script just actually creates the directory and the directory path. And you can see all that here and changes all of the ownership. And you can see here these little comments tell you everything it does. Create the config data set, you can create all these, create the media data set, create subdirectories, uh, and do all these things. So you might be wondering, what is it actually creating? Uh, if you come over here to the wiki, uh, you see all these things on the left side. It's going to create a configs directory for each one of these, and it's going to create the media directory. It's going to create the media directory with um, media, movies, downloads, just like this, media, movies, down, TV, downloads. It's not going to include this folder. It's not including that, just me, movies, TVs, downloads. And it's going to include a configs folder with all this cool stuff under it, not MB and Kuma. It's going to do everything down this left side. So it's going to be Prowler, Radar, Sonar, Unpacker, Jelly Seer, Recycler, Flare Solver, Bizarre, TDAR, Qubit, as well as Jellyfin. That's the full configs folder it's going to create. Now, mind you, it's not going to have any of those apps installed. So if you have those apps installed, don't sweat it. It's just going to create folders. And only if it doesn't find those folders already on your system. If they're already on your system, don't worry about it. It's not going to touch your existing setup. So that's what it's going to create. Let's come back over here. Uh, and at the very bottom, here's the cool part. It's going to create a Docker Compose files for, for all those services in one big stack that I just created. And it's going to automatically map the right volumes, the right ports, and the right permissions to them. So you don't have to come in here and think about, hey, what, what's the config file go to? And what how am I mounting my media directory so it can read all my media? You, it's done for you. All this is done for you. It's going to be put in a folder called Docker. Um, I'm going to show you all that in a minute. But this is, this is, the, this is the code. So let's go to the raw here. What I want to do is I want to do a wget here, and I'm going to include these uh, commands I'm about to run in the video description. So wget this, just like that. Now if I do an ls.l, there we go. It says uh, trueNAS file structure.sh. I want you to ignore the stuff here. This is other stuff from other tests that I was doing. So trueNAS file structure.sh. So now I want to do is now I want to do chmod plus x for trueNAS. That, just like that. And that's just going to allow me to run it as a script, because right now if I try and run it, it's not going to work. So I'm going to do one more command. It's going to be bash true NAS file script, just like that. So now it's going to ask me for my pool name. So whatever you named your pool, in my case, I named it tank. It needs to know where to put these new directories. If your pool is named dozer or whatever you named your pool, just type it in right here and hit enter. There we go. So now it's created all my data sets and it's created our Docker compose file at mount tank docker docker compose .yaml. The script is completed. Everything worked perfectly. Let's jump out and look at what our data sets are now. So now we have two main data sets. This is the configs directory. And you can see it's created all of my data sets here. And let's look at, look at some permissions. Configs is apps apps. 
Bizarre is apps, apps. All these are apps, apps. This is exactly the right permissions. Media is also apps, apps. So now that we have all these created, let's jump back into our shell. And I'm going to show you guys what's under them. Okay, so let's now change to mount tank. That. Okay, so now we have three directories created. So under my configs directory, you can see everything that was just built. Let's see the next one. Uh, the next directory is going to be da. Let's go. To, let's check the media directory real fast. Here we go. Now, media direct. Now notice that the permissions for everything are perfect. Um, let's look at the downloads, movies, and TV. You'll see apps, 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 apps. Perfect. Everything is just the way it's supposed to be. Let's come back up one. And now let's check this cool thing called Docker. What it's, what's in Docker? Docker has this new thing called Docker Compose.yaml. So what's in this Docker Compose.yaml? I'm going to do first. Thing I'm going to do is going to clear my screen, and I'm going to do a cat Docker Compose.yaml. This is the Docker Compose file I made, and check this out. Look at my volume mounts. Mount tank configs qubit torrent config. My media is all mounted correctly, and that's qubit all the way here at the bottom. And here is Jellyfin. Everything is all set up perfectly. My ports are all exposed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here's TDAR. Everything is already set up perfectly. Now, if you don't want some of the stuff, you can just highlight the stuff and delete it if you want out of the compose file, uh, or you can just set it up anyway and just don't run it. But here's what you need to do now. It's, this is completely optional. At this point, everything has been built. So I can do two things. I can do a Docker compose up dash D right here, and it'll launch this whole stack and launch the entire R stack for me automatically with all the permissions perfect and everything mapped the way it's supposed to map. But some people don't want to do that. Some people just like to use um, and be able to see their apps. Because if I do that, when I just do a Docker Compose FD, when I click apps, you're not going to see any of these apps. They'll be running in the background, but you have no visibility. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy all this. I'm going to come all the way up here. Here we go. All right, so this is my Docker Compose. And I'm going to start right here. So now I'm going to hit Control Insert, and that copies. Control Insert copies out of this. Come back into my apps. I'm going to hit Discover Apps. I'm going to hit Install via YAML. I'm going to call this R. And then I'm going to do a control V. And here's my whole stack right there. So now you can see it a little bit easier than maybe before. And I'm going to launch this. I'm just going to show you guys what's about to happen. So it's going to take a little bit. I'm going to come. I'm going to pause the video and come back um, when this is all launched. It's going to pull a lot of images. It's probably going to pull a few gigs worth of stuff. So I'm going to pause right here and we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so now we're up and running. And... I was kind of hoping it was going to list the apps out one at a time. It didn't. It just lists the whole stack. So I can either up the stack or down the stack uh, as completely one. So I'm not a huge fan of actually how it's doing, but here's a really cool thing here. At least my container is over, over here. So I can see all the containers that are running. In this case, there's 10 of them. I can check their volume. I can shell into them if I want, just like that. I can come over here. I can check their volume mounts, and I can just show you that it's working. Mount tanks config sonar is the config directory. Mount tanks media is mounted to media. So that worked perfectly. Uh, and of course, I can get the logs for these come on there we go let's check the logs for sonar and here's the logs for sonar everything's up and running and the other cool thing it's going to do is it's going to list my ports here so we can tell this is sonar running at 8989 this is radar at 707078 uh this is i'm not sure which one this is you'd have to go in here and check each of these individually but i, I off the top of my head i know 888 is dozzle things like that the only thing that's not going to run perfectly smoothly is qubit and again qubit's not running simply because um it needs its WireGuard file. This is the Hodio container. So if you want to do that, all you need to do is paste your Hodio container. I'll show you where it's going to be. So let's do a sudo su. Go to cd, mount tank, um, configs, and then the one the configuration for qubit. And you'll see here there's a folder called WireGuard. You're going to want to go into WireGuard, and you're going to want to nano a wg0.conf. Like that, and right here is where you're gonna to want to paste in your Docker Compose file. So once you do that, uh, you can reset Qubit, and Qubit will be up and running. But here's everything, and just to show you guys that it is running. For example, this is 10.99.0.206, and we're gonna start with Sonar just to show you guys it's up. And there it is. Everything works perfectly. Everything's talking to everything. It's done. It's a, it's pretty much that simple. So it's kind of disappointing that this is the way they choose to show containers. You might just want to do a Docker Compose up D, um and just manage it more command line. I know command line is scary for new people, but um, as you can see, this took almost no skill at all. Basically, I could have done this whole thing by copying and pasting three commands, which is the wget, the chmod plus x, um, and at that point, I would just do a Docker Compose up D.
that would have that would have been it. I could have done this whole thing with just those three commands and have the entire R stack up and running with the storage and the data sets all correct and everything here. And you can see in this case, all these folders have begun to populate with all these things. That's why these sizes have changed because uh, they're running now with the correct configuration files loaded in them. So everything is working. So this is, I just want to share that really cool script with you guys. I don't know if anyone's ever going to use it. I'm going to leave it up on GitHub. Uh, it obviously works with Fangtooth. I tested this on Electric Eel last night too, so I know it works with that. This is really good for people getting up from the ground up that have nothing already running. If you've got a bunch of stuff already running, like you already had half these folders, the script is just going to skip them. It's not going to change anything for you. Uh, so it might not be the best use case, but for guys that are just getting started and saying, hey, I want to do all these really cool things and it's really hard to get it up and going, this script makes it really, really simple. So I hope you guys like it. If you do like it, let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe to this channel. And please, if you want to thank me, buy me a coffee.